to another episode of Louise's Adventures. It is no longer Louise's Bookish Adventures because I'm going to try to add some like Sims gaming and you know cleaning videos and teaching videos and things like that. But today it's all about my June wrap up. I know it's a little late in the month for this, but I still wanted to you know give my thoughts and review of the books that I read for the month of June. So let's get started. So the first book I finished in June was The Crucible by Arthur Miller. I read this with my seniors for school. Um, I personally enjoyed it. Uh, my kids didn't enjoy it very much. They didn't really like the language or even the movie. They thought it was kind of boring. I think they'd rather have more description where this was, you know, like a play. Um, but I really like the Salem Witch Trials and I like the background and, you know, that time period. So I thought it was a lot of fun to read for me personally. And I try to make it as fun for them as possible, but you know, with remote, it's kind of hard to do that because they're not there, you know, they're not there in person. So it's kind of difficult, but um, I gave it three out of five stars because even though I liked it, it's not like, for me personally, it's not an amazing piece of work. You know, I've read other things by him that I liked better, but I still enjoyed the story and I still enjoyed the background and the history of this time period. Next, Next book I read was Silver in the War, Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. I read this for grad school and I have to say that I did not enjoy it. I gave it a two out of five stars and personally I think that's kind of being generous because it was supposed to be like I think a fantasy but I felt like there was just not enough description, there was not enough world building, I didn't really care about the characters. Um, I know it's a novella, so you can't put as much information in there as you probably would in a novel. I just thought it could have been so much better, and I found it to be quite boring. I felt like there was just not enough fantasy for me, personally, and I was anticipating it to be better, and when it wasn't, I was kind of disappointed, so. All right, next book is The Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. I have that right here. I gave it a five out of five stars. I love Lee Bardugo. Um, I love the sequel to The King of Scars. It continues to um, follow the life of Nikolai, who is the king of, um, can't really pronounce the place, but he is the ruler at the moment of Rafka. There we go. Um, and, you know, it continues to follow his life and, you know, the blight that's happening in the community and the world. And then there's like, you know, the Darkling stuff is happening and, um, what is it? The Alina stuff is happening and Zoya stuff is happening. And the whole time you're like hoping for certain things to come about. And Lee Bardugo is really good at like creating story where you want two people to be together but she doesn't make it happen, but there's tension there. Like, you know they want to be together, but when they're not, it's like, come on, Lee Bardugo, just get there, make them together so that your readers can finally, like, breathe. And I think she really did that amazingly with Kaz and Inej in Six of Crows, and she kind of does it here again in King of Scars and Rule of Wolves with um, Zoya and Nikolai. So um, I loved it, and I'm hoping she continues to write books in this world because, you know, I think... She does a really good job in the YA fantasy world, for sure. The next book I read for June was The Ballad of Black Tom, which I also have right here. Let's put those there. The Ballad, the Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval or Lavelle. I gave it a two out of five stars. It's supposed to be like a fantasy and I didn't get that vibe. They're supposed to be like a magical book, excuse me, a magical book. And like, I just didn't get the vibe of fantasy enough. Like I, I understood a lot of the racial tones in there trying to make it, you know, show that, you know, um, there was a lot of racism back then. And, you know, like I felt angry for that for sure. But if it's supposed to be like a fantasy, I feel like there should be more fantasy you know more magic and I felt like there just wasn't enough and honestly I was confused a lot of the time I found the writing to be very confusing for me to the point where I didn't even know what was going on for a majority of the time so I was kind of disappointed in that aspect but um so that's why I gave it a two out of five stars because you know 
if it wasn't a fantasy, the story would have been better. Like, I would have been like, okay, great story. Or really good story. But because it's supposed to be fantasy and there was supposed to be magic, I felt like it was slightly disappointing. So, sadly, two out of five stars. <laughs> Next was The Machine Stops by E.M. Forster. It's about... Um, the story is about this world where everything's powered by machines and this woman's son, you know, is kind of like questioning why the machines and what happens if the machines stop and the woman, everyone is just content, you know, like, you know, when you say bed, a bed appears from the machine. If you say food, food appears and this son who's like rebelling and going against everything is like what happens when the machine stops and you kind of start realizing that eventually the machines will stop they will break and people will be confused because they've relied so much on the machines they don't understand how to survive on their own you know like when you say bed and the bed doesn't appear what are you gonna do kind of thing like you can't sleep because there's no bed but like the bed's not appearing so how does that work? So it kind of makes you think about our dependence of technology and like how some people can't live without technology. Like I remember first year teaching, very first day, a student had their phone out and I took it away because you're not supposed to have your phone out in class and I gave it to the office and I remember her coming to me crying going, I don't know how to get home without my phone. And I'm just like, what do you mean? Like, how can you not know how to get home without your phone? Like, you should know your one, you've probably been walking home for a while since you're a sophomore, so you've been in, like, the school itself already. But, like, what if the phone dies, you know? What if you spend all day on it and then you don't have battery? Like, how can you not know how to get home without a phone? Like, I don't understand. So it's kind of like that dependency. Or I remember asking kids, like, what if the power's out? And they're just like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I do without my computer. I'm just like, are you crazy? Like, I don't understand how you are so con like dependent on a piece of technology for not just entertainment for your well-being for your ability to survive and like you don't realize it could break or lose power completely so i felt like it had a lot of that where you know we depend on technology so much just like they depend on the machine so much and what happens when it stops working you know so i thought it was a very interesting story and i quite enjoyed it i mean i did I don't know why I gave it two out of five stars, but like, I think I'll change that to at least four because I thought it really made me think. It was probably because it was late and I was really tired trying to read the story, so. Next, I did Such Thoughts Are Unproductive by Rebecca Campbell. I gave that three out of five stars. Okay, here's a synopsis. In a future Canada, a woman talks to a political prisoner mother but wonders if it's just an AI simulation of her. So it's all about like, um, she's talking to her mother who's a political prisoner, but she wonders if it's really her mother because she can't trust it, um, you know, because of technology and AIs and everything. And she thinks in her head that she'll see her mother again, but like she's a political prisoner, so that's not going to happen really. And it's just her trying to figure out who she's talking to, if it's an AI or if it's actually her mother. Interesting concept. I think, you know, with stuff like this, we always question those things. Like, who am I talking to? Is it really the person I'm talking to? Especially like with catfishing and, you know, internet and stuff like that, which just can be very scary. But I think, um, you know, the author did a good job in bringing that to light. Most of these stories were written before the 2000s, which makes all of this kind of scary because Back then, they didn't really have the technology for this just yet. So the next book I finished in June was The Red Queen by Philippa Gregory. This is about Margaret Buford, who's the mother of Henry VII, who eventually, you know, fathers Henry VIII, who we all know as, you know, the person with the six wives. Um, and it's kind of her rise to the, you know, the moment that she becomes... Um, Margaret Regina, who is the mother of Henry VII, who becomes King of England. And it's like her first marriage to, you know, giving birth to Henry VII, which almost killed her. She thought she was going to die. And her mother literally said, you know, save the baby. Like, let the mom die. You know, let her die. Which kind of really upset her. And, you know, she basically 
didn't have any children after that because she just was unable to get pregnant. But she really just wanted to be a nun most of her life. So I guess she was happy with that, you know. Um, so she got married again. And... So she got married again. And then he dies eventually in a battle. And so she gets married one more time. And that husband helps her, like, you know, finally get her son on the throne. I find her story to be very inspiring. You know, she was just, it's like all these stories about the women, you know, they're so devalued back then and sometimes even now. And they had to fight for everything, but like they've really orchestrated so much, you know, like they did so much to get to where they were. Like Margaret Buford tried everything to get her son on that throne and she succeeded. And she like ended up living for a very long time, you know, and her son ended up ruling for a very long time. And then, you know, Henry VIII kind of like went a bit crazy, let's be honest. But so I, I thought it was a great story. And I'm actually reading the next one now called The Kingmaker's Daughter, which is about Anne Neville, who is the daughter of um, the kingmaker who put uh, Edward the Fifth, no, Edward the Fourth on the throne, I believe. There's so many, but he was the king before Henry the Seventh, for sure, and he put him on the throne. And it's about her daughter and her journey, you know, to eventual death, which is kind of sad, you know, very sad. Next, and that book I get four out of five stars. Next is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. I enjoyed the science fiction book. Uh, it's about a robot called the Murderbot, and they're job is to murder people essentially they're assassins but this one has kind of like tweaked his machine brain whatever so that he's more conscientious of the world around them and he thinks for himself and like he just wants to watch his soaps you know he just wants to watch his shows while he's in his little chamber resting after doing all this sh stuff and his job is to go with this group to a planet to kind of like um figure out its geography, you know, and figure out what it is and map it out. But it turns out there's these things there eating people and it's all a plan. It's all like orchestrated. And there's another group that gets eaten too and destroyed. And the murder bots are like going crazy and going against their people and just insanity. And he ends up having to save his group and get them off the island of the planet. And eventually they like, you know, come with me, you can be part of us. Like they kind of accept them because there are androids in this group, but like he's a murder bot. So they don't really trust them because his job is to murder people. Like, how can you trust that? But uh, they eventually, you know, start to like him. But even then you can never really understand, you know, it's just, you're a murder bot. But I thought it was really interesting. I really liked that the point of view was in the murder bot's point of view like we see it through his eyes because i feel like if it was through other people we'd be so biased against the murder bot but he's like he saved your life you should be thankful you know um i liked it you know for like a science fiction novella which i don't usually i didn't like many of them but i enjoyed this one and i gave it four out of five stars which is my highest so yes i was pleasantly surprised it's called the book the series is the murder bot diary so i'm sure there's more than one but like i'm good with just reading this one <laughs> for sure after that was the king the fire keeper's daughter by angeline boley this is about a girl who's like thrown into this plot really with the police and the feds trying to find who's trying to find who starts like the what would you say the drug ring of this new drug that's killing people and like so many people are involved you know there's like her uncle who died of an overdose and then you know her friend died and then her friend's boy ex-boyfriend it's just like insanity and I thought it was very good I enjoyed it and like it's you know, it involves her and a young fed guy and her brother's there and it's like all done on tribal land because that's where they're like selling it. 
And I thought it was pretty good. You know, I don't read a lot of like, I would say this is contemporary because it's not fantasy or anything, but um, I guess it's normal fiction. But I enjoyed it. I thought it, it surprised me. I liked the characters. I was riveted the whole time. I thought it was a really great read. And it was on Reese's YA book club, which I don't really read book club books a lot. But like, it was a good choice. You know, I'm glad I asked for this for my birthday and I finished it. So hooray for that. And I gave it four out of five stars. My next one is called River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey. And it was bizarre, to say the least. Um, the story revolves around an alternate world, alternate earth. Apparently back, back in the day, New Orleans was having a shortage of meat, like, you know, from cows. So they had this idea of bringing hippos and farming them and breeding them for meat. And like that never happened, obviously. But in this book, it did. And this is the alternate world of what happens. And in this world, there is a place where there's feral hippos killing people. So this group of like thieves and bandits come together for this mission of eliminating those feral hippos for lots and lots of money. It was weird to say the least. Um, the idea of hippos being like the food source, which I guess makes sense. I think there's like places that sell horse meat and stuff. So like, I guess it would make sense to go to hippos too. Like we do eat cows, so, but cows are more docile where I think hippos are like more rambunctious. So you'd really have to tame them. The point is it was weird and like it, bounce from different points of views, you know, to different characters and then kind of like how they mesh together at the end. Um, and the main character's dream really was not to finish the mission, but he did. It was actually to eliminate this guy who ended up burning down his house and destroying most of his livestock and stuff like that. Um, that's really was his goal, but I thought it was bizarre kind of book because I'm like, oh, where did you even find that tidbit and like think i'm gonna roll with this um it was interesting i wouldn't say it was my favorite but it was interesting i did i gave it two out of five stars because i was just like didn't really care about the characters and i feel like that's so important when you're writing anything to care like a reader has to care you know and i personally didn't but if you like it you know that's fine that's fine the next one was um, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This was the last book I had to read to finish my Lee Bardugo books. Um, I enjoyed it. There's a lot of people that didn't like it. And I get like there's some scenes that are kind of triggering, you know, with certain rape scenes in there. But the story overall was interesting. And then, like there was a twist there that I wasn't expecting, which I liked. And I liked Alex's character and I liked how it you you get a lot of like background about different characters but like it flows so easily and it was right there it took me a while to finish it but eventually like when i got in the groove of it like i finished this book you know like i thought it was really interesting i gave it three out of five stars just because i thought it was average because you know i've read other things by lee bardugo and her fantasy books ya fantasy they're so great and so this was kind of like out of the box for me and i know i think there's gonna be a sequel but like i found it interesting and i liked alex's character and like what she was going through and i liked the magical aspect of it and i'm curious to see where the story will continue in the next book for sure but i thought it was a great kind of like mystery paranormal mystery kind of book um and i thought lee Bardugo did a good job for like i think her first adult fantasy books for sure uh, but yeah next was so many, so many books in June. Uh, my last one was That Only a Mother by Judith Merrill. So this story, short story takes place in like post-World War II. But I think it's years after where radiation is still a factor though, like definitely impacting the world and like babies are being born differently because of the radiation from the uh, bombs. Um, 
And I think this one particularly talks about the Nagasaki bomb, not the Hiroshima, but specifically Nagasaki. And I thought it was fascinating. It revolves around a mother who's pregnant. And she's hoping that, like, her baby won't be born deformed because a lot of babies are being born deformed. Like, no eyes, no hands, no feet, stuff like that because of the radiation. And the whole time it's like, oh, you know, like, she's so smart, the baby. You know, she's intelligent, she's bright, she's like a genius. And, like, you're so happy because it seems like, you know, the baby was born normal. And then the father finally comes. I think he was he was like on a trip or something. So he didn't get to see the baby for a very long time. The father comes and he's like, my baby's a genius. But then you realize like only a mother would see her like mutated really baby and not see the mutated part. That's why it's called um, that only a mother because it's only a mother would bypass all the other things and see like the good in her baby and i thought it was a great story i thought it was a wonderful twist and i really really enjoyed it um definitely recommend it really well written one of the few stories i did enjoy from this class and uh definitely brought in like my eyes in terms of what science fiction can be um especially because i had to write a 10 page paper and a 10 page story and I'm not very good with short stories. Like, I like long series in my mind. So my story revolved around, like, two kids after World War Three. you know, and they have their own deformities from, like, the radiation and uh, the nuclear bombs and weapons that we've had by then. And they eventually go time traveling. Their goal is to, like, they have a professor friend who wants to stop what's happening you know all the horror that ca was caused by the nuclear weapons and so he gets this idea to time travel and it's actually like his future self that tells him how to time travel and so he time travels and sends the back to when world war three was about to happen and it's their goal and like my professor said that it's super interesting sounds very middle grade and i'm like maybe i'll work on that maybe i'll create a middle grade series where it's a bunch of kids time traveling through history trying to change the course of the future for themselves but you know you also have to be super careful because you can't change things too much you know because that can be very bad as well so i thought it was a fun class i learned a lot for sure but um, but yes, yeah, so those are all the books I read for June. I read so many. I'm so proud of myself. I'm hoping that July is as successful as June. We're in June 10th, and I've really only read one book, which I started, I think. I mean, we're in July 10th, and I've only read one book, and it's I started that in June. So um, we will see, and I will talk to you in another video soon. Um, so please subscribe, press the button, subscribe button on the bottom right corner, um, comment, click the little bell for notifications. I appreciate them all. I'll see you uh, with another video soon. Bye.